Hello everyone and welcome to Alam Shar Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can automatically scroll your scroll view when a new message comes in. So this is a very simple chat application. It's all hard-coded data that we're going to be using. So let's say that I'm writing some chat stuff. So I'm going to say AAA, and you can see that it is inside a scroll view. This is the final product, by the way. Now, once I reach kind of like at that point at the bottom, now if I type something out, let's say, hello world, and send this, you will see that it automatically scrolls at the bottom. And this is a very great, I mean, good feature for chat so that people can see, okay, what's the last message? And I can say another message. All right. So let's go ahead and see that how we can implement this in Swift UI and iOS 14. All right. So I'm going to start with the very, very, very beginning. Uh, if you do want to see the scroll view part, you can obviously, uh, you know, fast forward to the end where you can see the scroll view part. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take a input from the user. All right. Now, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and create a vStack. I usually like to put things inside a vStack. And I want to create a text field. In order to create a text field, I want to put the value of the text field somewhere. So that somewhere will be the state. So let's go ahead and probably create some sort of a variable, a state variable that can hold the value. And we're just going to call it message text. Okay. Now, what I want to do is add a text field. So let's go ahead and add a text field. And there we go. And I'm just going to say enter message. Uh, my typing might be a little bit slow. My hand is hurting a lot. Uh, hopefully, it will get better. But uh, that's why my typing might be a little bit slow. OK. So let's go ahead and resume this and see what it looks like. So we have a text field that is fine. Let's put a spacer because we want the text field to be kind of like at the bottom. So now it's at the bottom. All right, great. The other thing that we want to do is add a button. So let's go ahead and add a button. And for the button, we're going to use this one, the one with the action and the image. And the good news is that you can actually use any image you want, even the system images. So I'm just going to say, and this is the button to send the message. And I can call this paper plane dot fill. And you can get all of these different names from uh, SF Explorer, I believe, SF Symbols. I think I might have an open, it's not open, but it's called SF Symbols. So this is where you will get all the stuff. SF Symbols. Just search for that and download it. It's a free software from application from Apple and it allows you to go through many different symbols and you can add those symbols as we can see that we have. Okay. Now another thing that I want to do is I want to put everything inside a H stack. So let's go ahead and wrap everything inside an H stack, the text field and the button itself so that they are side by side. Control I to make it better. And now for the edge stack, we can probably go ahead and apply some sort of styles. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to copy some styles so we can apply it. There we go. And for the V stack, we can go ahead and add a padding. And now it looks much better. You can see that it looks like where you can something that is a little bit floating. If you don't like that, you can remove the shadow and all that stuff. Okay, that's fine. The other thing that we need is somewhere to store the messages. And we're going to create a message structure first. And we're going to come back to that, that why we are creating it as a structure. And why does it have a message ID? So message ID is something unique to each message. And that is created uh, or the value is basically based on the UUID. So it's all automatically generated. 
Now let's go ahead and create a state variable to hold this. So right over here, I'm going to go ahead and create a state variable. Perfect. Now when you click on the send button, what we want to do is we want to create a message and append the message. That's what we want to do. So we can go ahead to the action of the button right here and we can create a message and then append the message into messages. Since the messages is marked as a state property or a state uh, attribute or property wrapper, it is going to go ahead and basically render the UI again. So that is our opportunity to go ahead and do something. So what we want to do is we want to display the message. I'm just going to go ahead and add another vStack right here. And I'm going to use a for each loop. Now you might be wondering that why are we using a for each loop? Well, we are using the for each loop so that eventually we can use the scroll view reader. If we use a, use a list, the list already comes with a scroll view, so we won't be able to use that correctly. Messages. And what's so much different about the message, which will be a message ID. And now we get the message. So we'll say message in. And now we need to display the message. So I can go ahead and create a text view, which can be message dot, I believe it is called message text. Let's go ahead and build it. And let's go ahead and run it. And see that if we add a message, does it even appear on the screen? So if I just type A, 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 uh, you can see that it is appearing. One of the things we can do is probably do some sort of an alignment. So I'm just going to say alignment to be leading. So the message appears kind of like a little bit on the left hand side instead of the in the middle. Okay, that's perfect. But we can make our message a little bit more better. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and add something called a message view control or a message view view. So let's go back at the bottom. This is completely up to you what kind of display that you want. Uh, this is a very basic display. Uh, text, simply text, and line limit nil, which means that it can have multiple lines. So instead of using this text, let's go ahead and try to use our message view. Message view. Passing in the message. So basically passing in the message. Perfect. Let's go ahead and resume it. And let's go ahead and type in a message. Let's uh, run this first. Okay, so it looks good. Now, if I go ahead and add multiple messages, and right at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and add something. Let's say B, 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 B. You can see that something happened. It, it is adding, but now since there's no scroll view, it's pushing everything down. That's a not a very good experience. So we definitely need some sort of a scroll view so that when the messages arrive, we should just start scrolling. Okay, so well the easy way would be to just wrap this VStack inside a scroll view. And that is the easy thing to do. We will simply say a scroll view and we will simply wrap this around it. That is where we are displaying the messages using the for each loop. Now select all this control I just to format it a little bit better. Now just by adding scroll view, let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so that is fine. Let's reach at the bottom. And now if I say B, 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 B. Okay, something happened. Uh, scroll view kind of looks like that it's very small for some reason. You can see that the scroll view is kind of like behaving that the scroll view is only till here. So that is something that we need to fix. So how do we fix this? Well, the easy way to fix this is simply put your message view, and you can do that inside the message view also, in a horizontal stack. And just by putting it inside the horizontal stack and on the right hand side adding a spacer is going to occupy the rest of the space on the right hand side. Let's run it again. Now we can see that I'm on the corner, right corner, and I can still select everything. Okay, let's go ahead and 
check it out. Like what happens if I go ahead and add one more B B B B B? Well, it's added, but it didn't really scroll, so it's hard for me to tell that these things were added or not. See that it's added, but I had to manually scroll. Now nobody is going to manually scroll anything, right? If a message is coming from your friend. You don't know if the message has arrived or not. You're not constantly scrolling to see. So this is where we will have to introduce the scroll view reader. So let's first see that where this ends. So scroll view is only this part. And inside the scroll view, I'm going to go ahead and add a scroll view reader. Now scroll view reader, the whole point of scroll view reader is to give you access to the scroll position. And the scroll view reader is going to give a closure where I can access a scroll view or access a variable that can uh, scroll to different positions and you can use any uh, variable name that you want. Okay, let's select this and control I just to format it a little bit better. Now just by adding scroll view is not going to do anything. What we want to do is we want to scroll every single time that the new message comes. So there are multiple ways of doing that. If you're using MVVM design pattern, then you can do a publisher and you can subscribe to it and all that stuff. Right now, I'm not using MVVM design pattern. I'm just using plain old model. Uh, so I'm just going to say on change. Now on change basically means that on change of something and this particular, which is VStack, is going to get refreshed when something changes. And when something changes, this is something that you can provide that what things is changes, and you will say messages. So anything that happens to the messages, new messages added or new messages removed, this particular function on chain is going to get fired, and it's going to give you the latest copy of the messages. Now inside over here, I can go ahead and say dispatch q dot main dot async. And then I can use the scroll view. So scroll view dot scroll to. But now the problem is that, well, scroll to where? I don't really know how or where to scroll to. And this is where your ID is going to come into play because the scroll view can scroll to a certain IDs that you provide. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this edge stack. And I'm going to go ahead and provide an ID to that edge stack. And this ID will be very, very important for the scroll view because the scroll view can use this message ID to scroll to that particular position. So now let's go back to scroll view. And what we want to do is to, we want to scroll to the last message. So, or the ID of the last message. So we're going to say messages, which is an array. And then again, messages.n index. So basically we are at the end, minus one, because the array starts with zero. And dot, message ID. So scroll to the message ID and anchor at the bottom. There are many different positions, center or whatever. Uh, we're just going to use anchor at the bottom. Which means that when you're scrolling at that particular edge stack should be at the bottom. Okay. And let's go ahead and try to run this. Let's try to add something. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and add something different now. Okay, so that's definitely working. You can see the BBBB is one now. It should say CCCC. If you see a little bit faded out over here, that's nothing to do with anything. That's simply this particular box that the text box, it has a little bit of uh, fading shadow going on. So you can remove that. Okay, so it's working, but it's kind of like all of a sudden it just appears. So what we want to do is we want it to animate, just like it animates in your actual uh, messages app or any other chat application. So we're just going to go ahead and wrap this around with with animation block. Let's go ahead and select that and control I to make it a little bit better. Okay. So just by wrapping this with with animation block, every time this actually happens, it's going to animate. So let's go ahead and add. And once we reach at the bottom, I'm just going to change this to something else. And there we go. Beautiful, right? So now it appears to be working like a chat application. It actually scrolls nicely. And the good news is that if you are using Firebase or you're using some sort of uh, API, 
where you're actually building the chat app, once you receive a message from your friend, then it's going to look exactly like, like this. So you can see it's working perfectly fine. Now, if you want to uh, download this code, I will have the GIF URL and you can download this code and you can enjoy this, uh, this particular thing. And you can, you can use it in many different applications, not only for chat application, but many other applications. If you like this video and want to learn more about how to use Cif UI with Firebase, then check out my brand new course, The Complete Hands-On Cif UI Apps Using Firebase. In this app, we are also going to build multiple applications, including the chat application, which uses the Firestore live update feature so that uh, whenever a new chat message is posted, it is automatically refreshed on your screen. So it's a, it's a great app. And apart from that, we'll be building many, many other apps, which includes the grocery app, the Fungi Finder application is just so much fun because it allows you to take a picture with your camera, upload the picture to the Firebase storage, and then display it on the screen. So this is a great app. And as I talked about it, Let's Chat app is also part of this. So this is a great course. It's a six plus hours course and with 35 downloadable resources. And you can see it's just got released and it already has 118 students signed up. So make sure that you enroll in this course. Now, one thing to keep in mind that when you're enrolling in this course, you should use the YouTube, uh, the link in the YouTube description. Uh, if you use the link that I'm provided for the coupon, I will get to keep a little bit more money, all right? And I will be, that will be appreciated. That will be, I will be really grateful. I've also added a referral link. So once the coupon 9.99 expires, go ahead and click on the referral link and that will give you the best price at that time. And referral links never really expire. So first try out the 9.99 link. If that is not working, if that time has expired, then use a referral link. But uh, once again, thank you so much for your continuous support. And I really hope that you have enjoyed this video.